Hello and welcome to the 11 o'clock news in Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, issued Edict 23 of 2018 and 24 of 2018 on transferring and appointing directors in the Quality Assurance Authority for Education and Training, the BQA, and in Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, the BACA. Edict 23 transferred Dr. Wafa Abdurrahman Amansari, Director of Higher Education Institution Performance Audit, as Director of Institutional Performance Audit for Vocational Training Institution in BQA. Dr. Sheikha Lubna bint Ali bin Abdullah Al Khalifa has been appointed as Director of Higher Education Institutional Performance Audit and Dawa Yosef Sharafi as Director of Communication Department. Edict 24 stipulated the appointment of Mustafa Abdul Aziz Mohammed as Director of Maintenance and Services Department at BICA. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs and Chairman of National Information Committee, Mohammed bin Ibrahim Amatawa, reviewed Bahrain's first voluntary report on Sustainable Development Goals 2030, during the Kingdom's participation in the high-level political forum on sustainable development, held in the patronage of the UN Economic and Social Council in New York. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs affirmed that Bahrain had made many achievements in the fields of sustainable development and the Millennium Development Goals, relying on its historic heritage. He stated that the first national voluntary report reviews the comprehensive development march supported by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The Minister noted that the Kingdom's commitment to implementing sustainable development goals was evident by its participation in drafting the goals on the national, regional and international levels. The Minister added that establishing an electronic system to implement the tasks of government work programme periodically has facilitated obtaining detailed data on the statistics and main indicators of government authorities. He asserted that consultation stipulates that the state shall provide housing for low-income citizens. Accordingly, 65% of citizens received the houses through public housing services and programmes in the past 40 years. He also noted that Bahrain has adopted active policies to increase suitable and equal job opportunities with high payment and to organise the labour market. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs highlighted the growth of the gross domestic product in the Kingdom. He affirmed that the Bahraini judiciary is independent in compliance with the constitution which separates powers. The voluntary review to implement the Sustainable Development Goals before the High Level Political Forum uh, of the uh, ECOSOC of the United Nations here in New York is yet another milestone that has been achieved uh, in presenting uh, specialized uh, reporting and reviews before international forums. The presentation today showcased Bahrain's efforts through the National Information uh, Committee and its uh, chair, His Excellency Mr. Mohammed bin Ibrahim Lumtawa, Minister of Cabinet Affairs who presented the report before uh, the international community and NGOs uh, showcasing Bahrain's uh, efforts in the implementation of the sustainable development goals, um, expressing a number of challenges facing Bahrain and uh, how we are intending to overcome them. Uh, within the presentation, there was uh, a general appreciation and, and uh, interest in Bahrain's presentation, uh, especially with regards to uh, being a small island developing state and uh, the environmental challenges that uh, we are facing. There was a diverse representation uh, in, the, in the panel presenting the report, whether it's uh, the Ministry of Housing, the uh, Labour Market Regulatory Authority, the uh, Supreme Council for the Environment and of course the Foreign Ministry. We are pleased uh, that it was presented in, in a very, uh, very uh, detailed manner uh, and we were very glad to see how it was comprehended and appreciated by the uh, attendees. First, I'd like to congratulate Bahrain for excellent voluntary national review. Uh, you know, because as a fellow small island developing state, we understand the challenges of uh, small islands in terms of sustainable development. And I think uh, you've done a great deal, you've done a, do a lot, especially in terms of empowering women. Because as the presenter said, that since 1920, women have been inside the uh, parliament and, and been involved in society. So that's very significant. 
and the efforts that uh, Bahrain has made in terms of empowering its people, trying to improve the lives of people in Bahrain, I think that's also very commendable. So we would really like to congratulate Bahrain. Uh, we in Singapore are also doing the national review this time, so we can learn from each other to improve the lives of our people. We've just seen a very thorough and well-prepared report presented by Minister Mutawa. Uh, we know this too because our department uh, had a mission to Bahrain uh, to visit Bahrain and to, to review the early uh, preparations and help in the preparation of the report. Uh, we saw a great amount of detail on housing, a uh, very thorough explanation of, of Bahrain's work in uh, housing for, for public housing, private sector involvement in housing, uh, infrastructure development, and also the attempt to position Bahrain as a, a platform and a leader in the region on sustainable development uh, and sustainable development issues in, in, in the Gulf region. So really I could say a thorough report, well prepared, uh, building on the strengths of Bahrain and also strongly looking to the future. Uh, interesting to see the link uh, between sustainable development in the report and the video that was shown and entrepreneurship, uh, uh, um, facilitating entrepreneurship both at the small scale and the large scale. The government of Bahrain has developed a comprehensive program of growth and transformation monitored by carefully defined indicators with huge investments in infrastructure developments, housing, education and healthcare. We have a goal to see that every Bahraini has a home, have a job and we would not have poverty. Sixty years ago, Bahrain's government responded to the challenge of a rapidly growing population with housing programs to accommodate the growing citizenry. The Ministry of Housing has signed an agreement with the UNDP to review Bahrain's housing strategy. The private sector has also developed targeted housing projects and given potential buyers access to adequate finance. The Kingdom's constitution mandates that basic and secondary education be free, available to all citizens and compulsory. Enrollment is 100% and Bahrain has eradicated illiteracy totally. The government has worked closely with the private sector to provide comprehensive healthcare to all citizens and residents. Through insightful effort, the Kingdom has exceeded health targets. The government's emphasis on diversifying the Kingdom's economy and empowering the private sector to articulate the three principles that are the key pillars of Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. Bahrain's government has been resoundingly successful in meeting the rising energy demands of the growing population. The electrical energy supply chain is clean, safe and virtually uninterrupted. Hand in hand with Bahrain's economic success, there has also been a sustained effort in investing in social development programs. The aim is to reduce the number of low-income citizens by at least 50% by 2030. The Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Mohammed bin Ibrahim Al Matawa, attended the second discussion session titled Migration Governance in GCC Countries Towards Safe, Flexible and Sustainable Societies head by the Labour Market Regulatory Authority, the LMRA, in partnership with the Government of the Philippines and in cooperation with the International Organisation for Migration, the IOM, and the Migrants Forum in Asia, as part of the accompanying events of the UN Economic and Social Council's High-Level Political Forum on Sustainable Development at the UN's headquarters in New York. Amitawa affirmed the Kingdom of Bahrain's keenness in ensuring and protecting the rights of workers and providing the right atmosphere for the development of the professional and living levels in order to play the role in achieving the Kingdom's sustainable development goals. He noted that expatriate workers in Bahrain receive care and respect in recognition of the efforts in the development march of the Kingdom. CEO of the Labour Market Regulatory Authority and President of the National Committee for Combating Trafficking in Persons, Usama al Abzi affirmed that Bahrain has embarked on a comprehensive and systematic movement to reform the labour market, particularly the modernisation and development of laws, regulations and procedures since 2004. It has conducted a comprehensive review and study of all regulations related to foreign labour issues, such as the sponsorship system, labour protection and human trafficking regulations, 
resulting in more justice-based systems that have been applied in the Bahraini labour market over the past decade. Alabsi noted that the discussion session highlighted the extent to which Bahrain has achieved the development plans, the objectives of the International Charter for Sustainable Development and the International Covenant on Migration, especially in achieving gender equality, empowering women, promoting sustainable and comprehensive economic growth and ensuring decent work for all. The Labour Fund, Tam Keen, organised an introductory session entitled Promoting Entrepreneurship and Innovation to Promote Sustainable Development Goals on the sidelines of Bahrain's participation in the Political Forum on Sustainable Development, currently held at the United Nations headquarters in New York. The event was attended by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Mohammed bin Ibrahim Amatawa. Amatawa underlined that the Kingdom has many success stories in achieving the goals of sustainable development, which include the Tamkin Labour Fund's unique experience in caring for and qualifying national calibres to contribute to the development process in Bahrain. He also pointed out that investing in human resources is one of the top priorities in all government plans and action programmes, noting the importance of shedding light on Tamkin's experience in stimulating national calibres and supporting small and medium enterprises in a manner that contributes to the service of the national economy. Tamkin Chief Executive Dr Ibrahim Mohamed Tahahi asserted that the Bahraini experience promoting the values, principles and objectives of sustainability is a top priority for the development initiatives launched by the Kingdom of Bahrain under the leadership of His Majesty Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa as part of the 2030 vision. Chief Investment and Marketing Officer Dr Nasser Khaidi said that Tamkin throughout 12 years of achievements has played a key role in supporting more than 170,000 institutions and individuals within its development programmes. Tamkin participation in this meeting comes as part of the Kingdom's efforts to affirm the importance of achieving sustainable development goals adopted by the United Nations in 2015 that contribute to the prosperity of nations. Upon the directive of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa and within the framework of the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to meet the needs of citizens and to follow up on the government's efforts led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa in implementing its work programme, the Ministry of Housing announced distributing the keys to housing units of a lousy project to beneficiaries. The Ministry said it would continue its efforts to distribute the unit keys in successive batches until the distribution process of the project is completed. The Ministry added that it seeks to intensify the work pace in various housing projects under implementation through careful planning to deliver units to beneficiaries as soon as possible. It also added that the Lousy project is one of the main projects listed in the Government's work programme to build 50,000 housing units in accordance with the commitment of social housing sector within the government's work programme to build 40,000 housing units within this time frame set by His Majesty the King and distributing them to beneficiaries. The Ministry highlighted that the Lousy project implemented by the Ministry in cooperation with the private sector affirms the government's success in implementing the partnership with the private sector included in the government's work programme. The Council of Representatives has standing committees tasked with various fields of parliamentary work. More in this report with Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. The Council of Representatives is the lower house of the Bahraini National Assembly, the main legislative body of Bahrain. This council was created based on the National Action Charter and the Constitution, working hand in hand with the Consultative Shura Council to consolidate democratic action in the country and popular participation in decision making. The Council of Representatives has standing committees tasked with various fields of parliamentary work, which include the Committee of Legislative and Legal Affairs. This committee specializes in reviewing draft laws and their conformity with the Constitution, assisting the Council of Representatives and its committees in formulating legislative texts, in addition to dealing with member affairs and studying membership provocation and permissions to suspend immunity and all other matters that are not within the scope of other committees. 
Another standing committee is the Committee of Financial and Economic Affairs that is tasked with considering construction projects related to socio-economic development included in the state budget, economic plans, and the observations of the committee on the same, as well as financial and economic aspects relating to ministry's activities on other various interests, in particular budgets and closing accounts. The standing committees also include Committee of Foreign Affairs, Defense and National Security, which studies the international stance, international political developments, the Kingdom's foreign policy, international conventions and agreements, and all affairs concerning internal security, combating crime and the state external security. This is in addition to the Committee of Services, which specializes in matters related to all aspects of education, occupational training, eradication of illiteracy and issues relating to social, sports, cultural, health, media services and labor affairs, and Committee of Public Utilities and Environment that is concerned with studying matters related to housing, postal services, electricity, water, agriculture, transport, roads, municipalities and the environment. These committees play an important role in discussing draft laws and legislations to ensure achieving the best interest of the people of Bahrain. Reporting for Bahrain International, Amheba Abdul Ghafoor.